So, welcome to the shovel. So today we're working on a project. Some of these things I can film, some I can't. Today I can. This is a closed down thoroughfare because of an accident up the way. And so we're locating uh, some, some, some people call it ditching. Um, the importance of locating and mapping all this stuff is basically cultural, uh, the community, um, not only archeological, but what went on in the state back then. We gotta keep it. We can't get all these people moving in want to destroy everything. We just can't do it. So here is uh, what some people call some ditching. This is an old canal. Uh, the canal is wide. It's about 25 feet. Kind of varies through here. It's really straight. I'll show you in a minute. It goes about 10 miles. How did they do this? How did they do this? Well, this is tidal. It's hard to believe we're 10 miles from uh, the Fork of the Broad and the Pacalago River. And this thing does a big circle. A little while ago, uh, it was low tide. This thing was dead. Well, now the tide's coming in and it's coming on up to the banks. You can kind of see. But uh, these are to be saved because it was probably rice canal, barge canal first, and then they became lumber canals. And uh, we just finished locating about 1,500 feet of this one. As you can see, this one goes on forever. Now, this is something you may see you know, down into the rice plantations, but this is way inland, 10 miles. And this water actually flows and does a big circle towards the Cumbie and the Pacalago behind me. It's very crazy and very unusual this far in to see uh, these kind of waterworks uh, and the continual flow with the tide. So it tells me they were definitely used. Um, it's just crazy how they did these things. But culturally, archeologically, need to be saved and protected. And, uh, Here's one of them, so. I don't know the words or the name of the canal, but I do know that that's partly what it is. So. They farmed rice in here for about 200 and some odd years and no wonder this is some of the earliest settled land in this part of the state of South Carolina. It's first by the French, the Spanish, and the English. The planters moved up into this area and because of the situation where this land lie and how it adjusts with topographically and uh, just where it is geographically made this one of the most superior pieces of rice planting land in the country. So between these two rivers lies this big hole. Well, by now, those planters had learned that all the silt carried in and out with the tide with some of the most natural fertilizer for the Carolina gold rice that could be had. So what they do, they engineered the great canal, the flow of that water, only in certain parts of land that could do it. And this is one of the only ones I know of. And there's hunting and fishing, and there were thousands and thousands of Indians in this area. It's just amazing. So the rice culture were left, and guess what came in next? It was the logging, the wood culture. All the timber and cypress had been cut years before. Well, it's time to drain it some more and plant pines, and that's exactly what they have been doing since about 1890. All these lands have been planted in pine over and over and over again, called pine plantations. So in the early days of rice, they started on the interior. 
The freshwater swamps were controlled by the weather, and eventually, the labor versus the swamp and the weather, ah, it didn't work. So what they do? They move to the river. The most ingenious waterway experts ever to land in this world came to South Carolina. And with all this work in the end, it created some of the most versatile habitat for everything that lives in this part of the country. Recently known as the Ace Basin, well, take a visit for yourself one day and check it out. Thanks for watching. Remember, always support your historical societies wherever you live. It's well worth it.